Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I use an iPad almost every day. I manage my business from it, I create YouTube ideas, I edit photos and videos, and I even design on it. In this video, I'm gonna cover my daily iPad morning routine and hopefully give you guys some tips on how you can increase your productivity and improve your daily workflow on your iPad. I'm not only gonna tell you which apps I use and how to get the most out of them, but importantly, I'm also gonna share some of the principles that I use to help me stay productive. I've said this before, but it's all very well and good having the best productivity apps, but unless you have some principles that you stick to, then these apps themselves are pretty useless. As well as telling you the apps I use, I'm also gonna cover some popular alternatives and explain to you why I don't use them. I don't like having loads of apps for lots of different things. I like to keep things really clean and simple. Personally, I think too many apps just causes distractions and you want the minimum best tool for the job. What's the point in having an app with loads of features that you never use? Finally, before we start, I'm using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro for all of these tasks, but for pretty much all of them, a standard iPad would work just fine. This has been a really highly requested video, so with that in mind, let's get into it. So after having grabbed a coffee and about 10 to 15 minutes of procrastinating, reading the news, and checking up on stocks. First thing I like to do is take some book notes, but I've already covered that as part of a separate video on how to retain more knowledge. I explain how I take notes to remember more of what I read. So go and check that out here. After that, we start to get into the productivity and the first step is calendaring. I generally like to look at my diary before I do anything else so I can start to plan how I get my tasks done for the day. I use the native iOS calendar app to manage my diary because I don't really use the diary for that much, so I don't need anything special. Most of the time, I find I use my diary more for personal things rather than anything work-related. When it comes to key principles, my number one piece of advice would be to say no to more. Free up your schedule to get things done. Trust me, I get it. I hate saying no to people as well because I feel like I'm letting them down but saying no to more is essential. My day used to be full of meetings and I just ended up not being able to get any of my work done. Don't be afraid of white space in your diary. You need it to think and be more creative, whatever type of work you're doing, even if you're an accountant. Well, maybe not if you're an accountant, but you know what I mean. When it comes to other apps to consider for calendar stuff, I'd recommend looking at Fantastical. I used to use Fantastical, but now I can't bring myself to spend £40 a year for something I just don't use that much. If you are willing to pay for it though, it's definitely the best calendar app around. The main thing I love about Fantastical is its natural language input. So when you start a new event, you can literally just type something like grab a pint with John on Tuesday. And if we weren't in total lockdown here in the UK, I'd be reminded on Tuesday to go and have a delicious pint and a catch up. So that's calendaring. Next up is task management. I use Todoist to manage my daily tasks and I absolutely love this app. This is usually one of the first apps that I fire up on my iPad in the morning after I've looked at my calendar so I can review my to-do list for the day. I like to wake up early and get some planning done before the day starts so this normally happens around 8am. I sometimes write my to-do lists the night before, but to be honest, I rarely do this because I find my head is fresher first thing in the morning. The way I find I get the most out of Todoist is to use it in split screen with other apps. So whether that be looking at my calendar, looking at my notes, or looking at my workflow, Todoist is just always there on the side so I can just quickly check things off or add things to the list as I'm going throughout the day. When it comes to key principles on to-do lists, I would say no more than the sticky note length of tasks. Basically, limit yourself to five things on a list. As with all these apps, they are only tools. You actually have to follow the right principles. I like to keep things really simple and say only five things should be on my list for the day because inevitably you always add things. If you're looking for other apps in this area, I'd recommend looking at Things 3. It's a really cool UI, it's really simple and it's got great keyboard shortcuts as well. Personally, I don't use things because I find it a bit too complicated for my needs, but if you want a bit more from your to-do list, then definitely go and check it out. For tasks that are more related to projects or workflows, I use Trello. I've spoken about Trello before, if you've seen some of my other videos, and it's such a cool app. It's super simple, and I like to keep this separate as it's more of a simple project management tool where you can see your work on a timeline. 
Within Trello, you organize your projects based on cards, which you can easily change around and categorize based on your timeline. I usually stick with the to do, doing and done setup because it's just a really clean and simple three step approach. I also love with Trello that you can have different backgrounds. I like to change these regularly just to keep my mind working. And I have multiple boards depending on whether it's for my business, for my design work or for my YouTube workflow. Here you're looking at my YouTube workflow and you can just see how simple it is to move things around. The whole team can log in and update things, which is great. So I can send links to clients as well and they can see the progress of different projects and they can even update stuff if they need to. When I'm doing workflows, I usually have my notes up from Evernote as well. And I also sometimes have to do this up in split view so I can see what's going on easily and it's really easy to update everything. When it comes to key principles for workflows and Trello in particular, I would say just keep workflows separate. Try and make your workflows really simple with the to do, doing and done method and make sure individual projects have individual boards. This way you'll be able to see at a glance exactly what's going on and you'll isolate your different workflows on different areas. When it comes to other apps to consider, there's such a huge range of apps in this area now. You've obviously got Notion, which is more of a note-taking app that can do a bit of everything. And that's also got a great workflow section in it. And even now within Todoist, they also have workflow sections as well. I like to use Trello for workflows because it's still for me the simplest and best UI for doing workflows. It's just so simple and it's great to keep stuff separate. The simplicity of Trello is what works for me. It may not work for you, so have a look at some of the other options out there. Next up, we're gonna talk about emails. And when it comes to emails, I've recently started using Spark. I've recently started using Spark. I use it on my Mac and my iPhone as well, and the interface and design is so clean and minimal. It's incredibly simple and intuitive to use. I used to use the native mail app, and I switched to Spark as it's just a lot cleaner and simpler to use. I actually have five different email accounts, which gets quite difficult to manage, but I find Spark works really well for this. I don't really need advanced features for my email, so this is a really simple app that just gets out of the way so that you can power through your inbox. In terms of key principles for emails, I'd say it's really important to batch them and create specific times during the day that you're going to engage with your inbox. A little bit like browsing social media, email can become really overwhelming very quickly. I'd recommend using two specific points in the day when you check your mail. I usually check mine at 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. in the afternoon. In terms of other apps to consider, obviously the Apple native app is a really good way to go. And the only other app I would generally consider in this space is Microsoft Outlook. It's a really, really good app, but I hate the UI and I can't bring myself to use it. If you guys have any other recommendations of decent third-party mail apps out there, then definitely let me know in the comments. I'd be really keen to check some of those out. Next up, we're going to talk about notes. I use Evernote to take notes, but it's so much more powerful than that. It's basically the most helpful app I use to organize my life and definitely the one I spend most of my time in by far. I love the minimal typing experience and it's kept that since the beginning. I also use it to type all of my YouTube notes. I break up the different parts of my life into different areas or notebooks, and I think of it as a long-term filing cabinet. One of the questions I seem to get a lot is why I don't use multiple note-taking apps for different things. Evernote is the oldest app around in this area, and I've been using it for years, but I'm not someone that's loyal for loyalist's sake. It gets better and better every single year. And for that reason, it's my go-to note-taking app for pretty much everything. I use it to collect inspiration, save things from the web, do journaling, capture ideas. I mean, literally everything. The other thing to consider is I don't really want to be paying multiple subscriptions for different apps. That's why I stick everything on Evernote and that way it's just really clean and simple. When it comes to key principles, I would say treat it like a filing cabinet or a library. Create notebooks and sections and organize notes based on tags. Don't try and write things like to-do lists within Evernote. Things will just get lost. I used to do this when I first started using Evernote and I recently came across things from five years ago which I've just never got around to doing. Don't be like me, keep your to-do list separate and focus on just notes for Evernote. When it comes to other apps to consider, there's obviously a brilliant app called Drafts which is great for writing things. 
And then, as I've mentioned before, there's also Notion as well. With Notion, it's more of a block-based writing experience rather than a continuous experience. And personally, I prefer the free-flowing form of Evernote. As I've said as well, the interface is probably the simplest around there. Notion is probably a bit more powerful, and that's great for people that are going to use all of those features, but it's not something that I need. Finally, I wanted to cover photo and video editing. I'm not going to cover video editing in terms of how I cut together my YouTube videos because I do pretty much all of this on my MacBook Pro. But something I do really regularly on my iPad is edit tons of photos and videos using Lightroom. I obviously do a lot of photo editing and photography and I just love doing that sort of thing anyway as a hobby. I use Lightroom to edit all of my photos on the iPad and I have a subscription to Adobe Creative Suite which just makes a lot of sense for me. I do use Lightroom on my MacBook as well but when I need more advanced features or I need to dive into Photoshop that's really what I get the most out of the MacBook Pro. Otherwise it's just easier to use Lightroom on my iPad. The interface is really intuitive and it feels so precise to be editing stuff right with your fingertips. For Photoshop, I'd really recommend doing this on your Mac though or your PC. It's okay on the iPad, but I personally just don't feel like I have the same sort of precision. When it comes to key principles, save your favorite settings into presets and name them based on different places, backdrops or lighting conditions. I also like to try and batch shoot photos where possible as it just makes the editing process a lot cleaner and saves you a whole lot of time once you've got everything set up. In terms of other apps to consider, well, to be honest, there really aren't many that I can recommend as serious contenders to Lightroom. In my opinion, apart from Photoshop itself, it really just is the best out there. Obviously, you need to know how to use Photoshop if you want to edit photos in much more depth, but when you start to use Photoshop and Lightroom together, that's just an absolute dream, and it's where you're going to get the most value from both apps. So guys, that's it for this video. There's a whole host of other apps I use on my iPad, but these are the ones I consider part of my morning productivity workflow. I'm gonna be doing another video soon on my creativity workflow, where I'll go into more detail on the apps I use for all of my design work and how I use them. So definitely stay tuned for that. I'd love to hear what apps and principles you guys are using, so definitely let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if there's any other videos you'd really like me to do. I hope you enjoyed the video and remember to subscribe for more.